Aloha, my lords and ladies, tiki geeks, tiki geekerellas, tiki geekulas, and tiki geekeritas. <laughs> and I am so glad I got that out before I finish this zombie. <laughs> I am Lord Bloodraw, host of Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, speaking to you from Larry's Leaky Tiki Lounge here in the mythical land of California. <laughs> And I've been asked to give you a few comments on the subject of today's seminar, grass skirts or the vegetarian's dilemma. Now I like a nice salad like, what? It's not on the grass skirt, what's, what's it on? Oh, future schlock, vintage visions of time and space. Oh good, well I, I like that too. Uh, well, as you know my loads and ladies, uh, Sci-fi culture and tiki culture both flourished together in the 1950s and 60s. And why not? They're both about exploring the unknown, the unusual, and the exotic. Braving their dangers and uh, tasting of their pleasures. <laughs> While people were drinking Mai Tais and munching crab rangoon in the tiki bars, in the movie theaters, they were exploring the farthest reaches of time and space. yourself as one of the crew of this faster-than-light spaceship of the future, sharing their curiosity to know the unknown, their tension, their readiness for inconceivable adventures. Sir, we're being radar scanned. United Planets Cruiser C-57D, J.J. Adams commanding. Who are you? Morbius of the Bellerophon. Oh, Dr. Morbius, my orders are to survey the situation on Altair IV. Commander, if you sat down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. When you reach the Forbidden Planet, you will meet Dr. Morbius, played by Walter Pidgeon. The doctor is sole owner of this fabulous world. Anne Francis is his alluring daughter, Alta, who has never seen a young man till she meets Commander Adams, played by talented Leslie Nielsen. Not him. Didn't bring my bathing suit. What's a bathing suit? Oh, murder. You will meet a charming character in the robot, able to produce on order 10 tons of lead or a slinky evening gown. Always at your service. It must be the loveliest, softest thing you've ever made for me. And fit in all the right places, with lots and lots of star sapphires. Star sapphires take a week to crystallize properly. Would diamond or emeralds do? You explore all the wonders of a vanished civilization. You travel deep down into the heart of the forbidden planet to discover the incredible marvels of this lost genius race. These magnificent scenes in striking Eastman color stagger the imagination. 20 miles. Look down, gentlemen, are you afraid? 7,800 levels. Yet the wonders of the planet Altair IV conceal a strange and evil force, unknown, irresistible.
the humanoids. Out of the atomic war came the perfect man, the humanoids, man's own creation. Physically and mentally perfect. Created to serve their masters. Men and women. But could man compete with this creation, the perfect man? You love that, that machine? I love Pax. He's dedicated to keeping me happy. And I am happy. The robots are machines. They must be made to look like machines. The perfect man, created by man, becomes man's worst enemy. Rossi! The most provocative story ever filmed. The most unusual story ever filmed. You must see it to believe it. The creation of the humanoids. The perfect man. This is the world of the future. One step beyond your wildest imagination and your strangest dreams, where science has gone berserk with grotesque experiments in the ungodly art of flesh fusion. She's being prepared. Soon she will be ready for the great moment when she and I will become one person and my flesh will absorb hers. The fusion of male and female. Living humans drained of imperfections and grafted together to form a new and terrifying race. The incredible bi-sapien race of the wild, wild planet where the slightest error becomes the mutilated refuse of mankind, where success is a super being, a man-made race of automatons programmed to overpower man himself. These are the invaders from the wild, wild planet. Female form destructive units of invincible strength. Some ability to disappear into thin air. Only a handful of men stand in the way of these mass-produced monsters, fighting desperately to uncover the diabolic mystery of their creation, locked in the malignant mind of one man. My mind! You could never comprehend. You will never comprehend! Insane master of the wild, wild planet. Excitement blows you into a world of madness. Danger engulfs you in a flood of cold fear. And terror catapults you through a galaxy of horrors. This is the wild, wild planet. back. What was that? What? I thought I saw something. Nothing. Time selector back to plus six hours. Hold it. I'm going to open up the lace of cycling all the way. Steve! Take it back, take it back. Steve, you're overshooting. Take it back the other way.
Is there life on Mars? For centuries we have wondered. Now, for the first time, through the new photographic miracle of Cinemagic, you will see the wonders of this strange and terrifying world when you see the angry red planet. Join this daring crew, the first in the scientific race between nations to attempt to land on Mars. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, fire. Blast off from Earth with courageous astronauts, Gerald Moore, Nora Hayden, Les Tremaine, Jack Crucian, travel thousands of miles through space to the unknown. <coughs> Cinemagic is not being shown to you now, but this wild land comes alive in Cinemagic. You'll see buildings miles high in Cinemagic. Journey to the center of sudden terror in Cinemagic. Be trapped by the tentacles of man-devouring plants in Cinemagic. Feel the fire-hot breath of a 40-foot monster as it reaches for you in Cinemagic. Your eyes will see the wonders of a world no eyes in this world have ever seen before. I wonder, will we ever get back to Earth? to the outer universe a reality. Satellite space stations in operation for landing and refueling. Apparently we have some deadly neighbors in outer space. Captain, it's heading toward us. And now the story of the fantastic adventure that befalls mankind's most daring crew of space explorers. Not a sound, not even the hum of an insect. Is this a dead planet? Landing on an unknown planet, they are captured by long-limbed beauties. When they say, take me to your leader, and they take them to a creature like this, you know they're on planet Venus. And the queen of outer space is Jaja Gabor. The most talked about woman in the world knows what she wants on Venus, too. Then. We're the only men on the whole planet? Yes. Wow. You'll see the revolt that brings the planet under the domination of strangely masked females who hate and fear the male animal. Let me kill her now. You're not only a queen, you're a woman too. Let me see your face. The savage horrors of fearsome mutated beasts. <laughs> the war of the sexes when voluptuous Venusians give battle to spacemen from Earth, the destructive might of incredible space rays that stop man from returning to Earth. Prepare for maximum acceleration. the indescribable delights of a female planet. <laughs> oh, the excitement, the adventure. But uh, sometimes, rather than us exploring the final frontier, the final frontier came to us, looking to conquer our planet and even steal our women. <coughs> Frankenstein meets the Space Monster! All recorders to fast, demons, this is it! For the first stop. time on the screen, Zero. America's missile might mobilized 
against annihilating invaders from outer space. We have come here to this planet for one purpose only, to acquire breeding stuff to repopulate our planet. See the kidnapping of the Earth Maidens or the love-starved slaves of the sterile planet. Very good. We have done well, Nadia. I am pleased, Princess. You are satisfied. I will be satisfied when we have enough more like her to commence phase three. See the terrifying invasion of the beach party. A United States astro robot become a creature of death. For the first time, see Earth horror versus space terror. This is Carter, Johnny Carter. Oh, sure, they're from another planet. What a dilemma for young lovers Steve Terrell and Gloria Castillo. You thought I was kidding. Nobody will believe the invasion of the saucer men. All this makes it seem natural for a beer-drinking bull to appoint himself chaperone of Lover's Lane. Hey, for Pete's sake! And a farmer with the longest shotgun you've ever seen plays the villain. What's so funny? Well, I expected to be frightened on my wedding night, but nothing like this. It's our busy night, too. We've been flooded with calls from people who say they've seen flying saucers and little green monsters. Wonder how that rumor ever got started. <laughs> it's too fantastic to believe. Just think of it. Only this special unit and the President of the United States will know what happened here tonight. You mean you think we know what's happened? beginning a strange journey, a journey that no Earth people have ever undertaken before. Universal International presents the most startling, the most imaginative and suspenseful science fiction drama ever brought to the screen. You'll marvel at the superior intelligence that unleashes its deadly ray. Dave! Or can kidnap an airplane in flight. Pulling us up. Prisoners hurtling through endless space, speeding toward the unearthly furies of a planet gone mad. See sights never before dreamed by man. The battle between guided meteors and deadly rays. They're gonna hit us. They're gonna hit us. A planet doomed to destruction.
while captive Earth people fight for their lives. It is indeed typical that you Earth people refuse to believe in the superiority of any world but your own. Run, Luke, run! from Mars. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. Trusted police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody's getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to stop the... Invaders from Mars. Capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes. Turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. <laughs> Invaders from Mars. Weird, fantastic beings of a super intelligence. Ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe. Come on, step on it. Search every tunnel. We gotta find Ronaldo and the kid. When the colonel gives a signal, get back here on the double! Metalunans, Martians, and saucer men. Oh my. <laughs> All very interesting creatures, I'm sure, but for real high adventure in deep space, for thrilling danger and thrilling pleasures, there is only one creature in all the universe that's sure to satisfy. <laughs> Meet the most beautiful creature of the future. Her name is Barbarella, and she makes science fiction something else. Jane Fonda is Barbarella. Barbarella is a five-star, double-rated astro-navigatrix Earth girl whose specialty is... Love! Shall I tell you what I would like? I think I know. Her top secret mission is a real wing dinger. I got him. Good many dramatic situations begin with screaming. Me a garment. See Barbarella do her thing with the nice angel. Da, da, da. With the warm, friendly ice man. With the cold, evil black queen. Hello, pretty, pretty. With the charming hand to hand Romeo.
see Barbarella do her thing in the wild, excessive machine. Sort of nice, isn't it? In the biting birdcage. In the chamber of dreams. In the labyrinth of love. In the deadly dollhouse. In the palace of pleasure. adventure beyond your imagination when you get lost in space with Barbarella. You are all mature out there, aren't you? I mean, at least chronologically speaking. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, that's just the beginning. Sci-fi culture and tiki culture intercepted in many other ways after that. In the late 1960s, for example, yes? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I promised Leilani that I would, uh, well, uh, never mind, that's none of your business. Uh, well, my lords and ladies, I want to thank you all for being here today, and I want to give special thanks to Will the Thrill Baharo and Scott Folks, the co-authors of It Came From Hangar 18 and The Space Needler's Intergalactic Bar Guide, which is making its debut right here at Tiki Oasis. <laughs> and, of course, a special thank you to composer Neil Norman for providing a soundtrack to all of our cosmic fantasies. <laughs> Well, lords and ladies, I also want to invite you to check out my television series, Lord Blood Raw's Nerve Rack and Theater, in which I host the best, worst, and wildest horror and science fiction films ever made. It's on broadcast TV and streams online at various times in various parts of the country, so the best way to find it is to friend me on Facebook, where you can get all the information you need. You can also search for episodes on YouTube. Quite a few of them are there. <laughs> well, my lords and ladies, Aloha, new Eloa. And, of course, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, geek out. <laughs> <laughs>